Hey guys, welcome back to Creep Designs by Twitch. Gonna start off by saying thank you to everyone who commented on my last video um, with your support and your kind words and your suggestions and everything. I really do appreciate everyone's support for everything. Um, and I apologize for the emotional baggage that was in the last video. Anyway, uh, before I get too far ahead of myself, I want to say a huge thank you to Deborah from Coastal Ridge Reloved. I'll put the link in, link for her channel in the description. She does amazing work and you should go subscribe to her if you haven't already. Um, she sent me purchased something for me from my Amazon wishlist. Um, she got me this Craig pocket hole jig. So that's awesome, really excited about that. And I got another one of these little glue bottles, which is awesome. So thank you, Deborah. Um, and I also wanna say another thank you to Angela you know that name by now. <laughs> um, huge thank you to Angela for buying me coffees on the Buy Me A Coffee app. I will definitely be going to get iced coffees with that. You know I will. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate everything. It all helps me to keep doing what I'm doing. Ooh, bit wobbly on the camera. Um, so, getting down to business. Um, today I'm working on the huge buffet you just saw. Uh, it is a client's piece and it is huge. It doesn't fit in my staging area. I've, as you can see, I've already sanded the top back. I'll, you'll see bits and pieces of that in a minute, but I couldn't record the intro for this when I was doing it before I did that because my mum had... Um, people in the yard cutting trees down so you know there's no way I was talking over the top of that as much as I am loud um, but anyway I've already gotten stuck into this so let's get going so the first thing I wanted to do with this piece was clean this top off and get it ready for staining because that's the first thing I'm going to do um, I could tell just by looking at it that this piece was going to have a really thick factory finish on it So I started off with my carbide scraper to see if that was going to do the trick. It was a little tricky so I Went in with my sander and 80 grit sandpaper to see how that would go and even that was struggling uh, It did scuff the surface up a lot for me though, which made it easier to use the carbide scraper um, I've found that the carbide scraper has an easier time getting into it and getting that finish off if you scuff it up first because it has something to grip onto, if that makes sense. So I went over the whole piece and scuffed it up really well with the 80 grit sandpaper and then went back in with the carbide scraper, which absolutely killed my arms. My arms are still sore from doing this last week. So, you know, it was definitely a workout. So once I got as much of the finish as I could scraped off to make my job easier with the sander, I went back in with the 80 grit sandpaper again and got off the rest of it. I avoided hitting the actual edges themselves uh, with the 80 grit sandpaper because I didn't want to chew them down and like round them over too much. So now I'm using, I think it was 120 grit sandpaper to hit those edges and corners and start smoothing everything out a bit. I then did two passes with 240 grit sandpaper and once that was done, I grabbed a piece of 400 grit sandpaper and went over all of the edges and the end grain to close them over a bit. As you can see, I still haven't cleaned the base of this and that is because I like to remove everything before I do any cleaning. Uh, if you clean before you take your hardware off, 
uh, there's a good chance you're going to have grit or grime or dirt or dust underneath where the hardware sat. And apparently I don't know my own strength. I also removed all of the doors and the hinges and used a piece of tape and a marker to mark where the doors go back. Once I got everything off and out of the way, I gave everything a dust off and gave it all a really good scrub with Cartamilli Clean Cut and then went over it again with clean water and a clean rag to get off any residue from the cleaner. So this is the last of the primer I have on me at the moment and instead of pouring it into a container and wasting anything that's left in the bottle I decided to just chop the top off and use it like that. So I find the easiest way to do doors and stuff like this is to put it on one of my smaller furniture dollies and that way it gets it up off my workbench and I can also spin it around so that I can make sure I've got every part of it with primer. The reason I'm priming and not scuff sanding is because I hate scuff sanding. I really hate scuff sanding, especially on bigger pieces like this. It wouldn't be that hard to scuff sand, but you know what? The primer does the job. If I was aiming for coverage with this piece, I'd probably do two coats of primer, but in this case, I'm just using it for the adhesion, adhesive property in it, and that will help my paint stick to the surface really well and make sure it's not going anywhere. All right, that is all primed and looking hideous. Doors done, drawers done, body is done. Um, and you know, I've still got primer left. So I'm going to be painting the buffet today. But it is bucketing down. So it's very noisy in this shed right now. But let's get painting. So for the top of this buffet, I'm using Cartamilli Washed Away Stain in the colour How Now. I wanted it to be slightly less opaque so that I don't risk covering up too much of that grain. So I did cut it with some water a little bit. It really was a small amount, but it made it go on nice and smooth and adding a bit of water to it also gives you a little bit extra work time. As you can see, I'm starting with the underside first, and once I've done all of the underside edges, I will go around with a piece of sandpaper and get rid of any brush strokes that have gone over. As you can see, it's nice and clean again. And then I'll go around and do the edges, and then I'll basically do the same thing with the sandpaper again and uh, clean up anything where the brush bristles have gone over the top. And then once that's done, I will move on to the top. When I'm doing the top, I like to do it in long lines the way you see me doing it here. But I also like to include the end grain in that line with it so that there's no visible or clear stop and start line on that very end, if you get what I'm saying. It makes sense to me anyway, but yeah. The other thing I do when I'm staining in sections like this and rubbing it back with a cloth is I like to kind of rub the edges of the stain. So you'll see in a minute here that I do it. And that is so that when the stain dries, there's no really harsh line in between the sections of stain.
and now I'm going to be sealing it. Um, I'm going to be using, of course, Cartsamilli satin top coat. And I've lined my roller tray with foil. And you can apply it using a brush or a sponge or cloth or whatever you want to use, but I'm using a roller um, and specifically a Too Fussy Blokes roller with a smooth roller sleeve. It has been washed a couple of times, but it is still good to go. And yeah, I find um, I get the smoothest and most streak-free finish using the roller and I'm excited about rolling this top because there's no you know fancy edges and stuff it's all just straight corners and everything so it's gonna be a breeze So I ended up doing three coats of satin clear coat and I only smooth sanded with 400 grit sandpaper before the last coat and this is how smooth it has come out and that grain just pops. Okay so a couple of things, um, I've mixed a custom colour for this piece, uh, I did do a video for it but you know it got out of hand and it took me ages to get the color just right and there was a lot of tweaking after I thought I was done with it and I had to keep coming back and forth back and forth it took me a whole day to do it so that's not going to happen uh, but basically the bulk of this color is made up of sage advice with some pine trees some Lonsdale lawn a whole lot of black bear uh, so I'd honestly say it's probably equal amount sage advice and black bear um, and it was coming out more blue than what my customer wants so to cancel out the blue in the green um, I added some what was it so I used yellow and orange to cancel out the blue so I used starburst and and more mustard I probably could have used one or the other but I didn't want to use all of one of either bottle up because I haven't used those ones yet so I still want to have some of those left to use on something else but anyway um, this is the inspiration photo if I haven't shown it to you already uh, there's a couple of inspiration photos I think I have shown you already I think I did anyway um, so yeah no I didn't I don't know anyway inspiration photos um, so that's basically the gist of what we're going for and I'm going to be rolling as much as I can and for wherever I can't roll I'm going to be using my new Brush keeper. <laughs> uh, memory is shot. Um, so yeah, I'll be using my brush keeper. So this will be the first time I'm using it and I'm really excited to have a go at it. So let's see how this goes.
Alright. The bristles on this are super soft and it feels really nice. Like, it's not heavy because it's got a nice thin handle on it and the balance is really good. And that is a good thickness to hold and it's kind of tapered a little bit, I think, so it fits better like that because your fingers do that, not, you know, straight like that, which doesn't feel comfortable. So that feels really good. Alright, so now I'm going to put that in there to keep it That's it for me for this one. It is all done. Um, I will do my best to stage it. Uh, I did add a curtain down the end there to try and lengthen it a bit. I can't actually extend the curtain out any further than that because of how thin it is. Um, but it's the staging area is still not quite big enough. Um, so I will stage it the best I can, but it's not like I'm trying to sell the piece, so I'm not going to put a huge amount of time into staging it. But I do want to get some nice photos of it. Um, I think, honestly, the hardest part of this piece was mixing the colours and trying to get the colours right. I'm really, really hoping that my client is happy with this because, I mean, I love it. I think it's turned out great.
um, but hopefully it is what she was after. Um, the knobs that I've used on this piece are ones that she has picked out. They are from, I'm probably going to say this wrong, do up. I'll put the link in the description for those. Um, as well as everything else that I've used on this piece in the description. If there's anything you're looking for, look in the description. If you can't find it, ask in the comments. Um, yeah. I think that's it. All right. And I'll be staging this on the dollies because I am not taking this off the dollies because I won't be able to move it if I do, so. Um, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.